Well, um, there we go then. Um, this presentation, as you might have noticed, is, uh, will be about uh, making the hammer eye. Uh, in uh, uh, there are two major uh, options. If you look at it um, in the classic way, um, you can use a chisel. Uh, chisel is uh, fast in using. There is no real deformation of the material you are using. And with uh, deformation, I mean, um, well, we will get to that later when I get to punching. Um, but when you use a chisel, there is always the possibility you have a rag uh, when you open the eye from the uh, second side. Uh, with punching, you are left with a very clean hole. Uh, but as I said, there uh, will be slight deformation of the material uh, because most punches have a flat uh, bottom side. Uh, there is always some material pushed uh, away right in the same direction as you are punching. And this drag uh, will make the bottom side uh, slightly wider than the top side. And when you want to forge nice cheeks on your hammer, um, this will leave one side of the cheeks uh, longer than the other because there is more material because of this deformation. Um, when we look at the chisel, you can see the two pictures at the top. Um, it's sharp and that way, uh, that way you um, cut through the material and um, almost all the material is pushed and directly to the sides because it's cutting the material in half. And you can see uh, on the second side uh, drawing I made on my blackboard. <laughs> um, when the two meet, you can see that if you push it through, um, in many occasions there will be a small rag. And if you drift the, the opened up hole afterwards, you push the rack to the sides if you don't cut it out and there will be a cold shot and there is a possibility that will develop into a crack later on and we do not want cracks in our hammers or other handle top tools um this is a punch it's slightly flat on the uh, the working end and at the first drawing, I slightly exaggerated the deformation of the material to prove my point. Um, but you can see when the two um, surfaces meet on the second side, you push the small uh, slither very clean out. Um, um, in the best way, you can do this at a um, slightly lower heat. Because, because then the material will shear off instead of smear. Um, and that leaves you with a very clean hole. Uh, but in this occasion, because of the punch with deformation of the uh, material. Well, now if we combine these two, uh, we get the hammer eye punch, uh, which leaves us with a clean hole, no rag. Um, the hammer eye punch is very stable in use. It's very accurate. And there is always some deformation because there is um, punching involved, but it's um, a fair amount less than when using a flat bottom punch. This is the hammer eye punch. You can see um, it has a point. It has two um, ground edges. And um, be because it has... Um, uh, this cutting edge, as it were, um, you split the material more like when you would be using a chisel, but it's still steep enough to punch out the plug um, when you uh, punch it from the second side. So it leaves you with a very clean hole. And in my perfect last drawing, uh, you can see that there is absolutely no deformation of the material 
and a very clean hole. It's so much easier when you make a drawing than is that when you would be using the real material because now it is a perfect hole. Um, I have some tips for making um, a very nice clean hole in the middle of the material. And firstly, that is to measure twice where you want uh, your hole. I use a center punch mark because the uh, hammer eye punch has a sort of a point. You can put that in your center punch mark. And when I start um, uh, a fresh hole, I heat up the block with my center punch mark. And then I don't heat it to um, very hot, slightly red, slight orange maybe. And then I uh, use the punch to make um, a first uh, a first blow um, to uh, make a very good beginning because if you if you don't have the beginning right uh, you will be fighting it uh, along the way along all of the way when you are punching the hole and so you need to take your time at the start because if you don't have the time to do it right, you don't have the time to do it over, so do it right the first time. Um, also, uh, many of you might have seen uh, there is a special type of tongs involved with this style of punching. Maybe uh, good to say here that um, I absolutely do not claim to have invented this style of punch whatsoever. There are many, many Smiths um, who have used this style. Personally, I learned this style from Brian Bazil, and um, I am so uh, enthusiastic about this style. I'm spreading the word. Um, but the, the chance I ground the, the, the chisel of the, or the, the hammer eye punch perfect in the middle, the chance is very close to zero. Um, with the means I have, I absolutely cannot make it perfect. But um, there is a slight deviation from the center. And if you turn the block uh, around and punch with the punch in the same direction uh, as you had it the first time, you have the deviation to both sides. And the mean of this deviation is the absolute center. So if you turn the block after every blow, you go straight through the middle. And that's what we want. Um, when you are uh, punching, the, you will notice that, that there's a moment when your punch starts to stick in the hole. Uh, then it's heating up too much and you have to cool it. Um, also, it is uh, good to put your punch only for the shortest amount of time uh, needed in the hole because when you want to make a hole in a piece of steel the steel has to be hot and the punch has to be cold but when you put the punch in the hole it will heat up and your block will cool down so to prevent it you uh, have to put it in the hole only as short as possible um, as i said earlier when you punch out the plug, uh, you uh, better uh, do it at a lower heat um, because um, it shears and not smears. And the, the bottom part acts as a sort of die to your uh, punch. Like with uh, the modern cold punching machines, they also have a die and a punch. Um, other thing is that it's... Um, very good to practice this uh, many many times because a practice makes perfect or uh, as perfection is very hard to reach it will be near perfect then um that's it we can go to the questions now if anyone has any I find uh, this kind uh, of chisel is um, really cool because 
when you work with a really hard uh, steel, for example, the SAE 9260, um, was uh, really cool. Um, it's more easy to make a hole um, than other option. Or <coughs> Sorry, again, please. I, I find this kind of chisel uh, works great with hard steel. Um, for example, 9260, um, the, the, flat, uh, the flat punch, the, um, the flat chisel, um, you need a lot of uh, time and work to, to make the hole, but uh, this design uh, was great and unique work less. Yeah. Because really, really good, uh, the steel. Yeah, the, um, uh, you need really good steel, mm -hmm. um, uh, but I used um, uh, C45. Everybody knows that type of steel. Um, I have made punches out of C45 and use it to punch holes in C45. Mm. Um, but it will not last as long. <laughs> um, I like um, hot working steels. Uh, like H13 mm. um, because they are um, very tough to break <laughs> and they last a long time uh, also with the, the I use the power hammer a lot for punching mm. and uh, this type of steel is very um, very good for that but you can use all sorts of um, uh, steels only some will last longer than the other well since you said you're also punching a lot of holes with the power hammer, mm -hmm. do you use a different tool, like different size, or how's your tool shaped differently for the use with the power hammer? I can grab it. If you have two seconds, I can show it. Can can everybody see this? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this is what I used on the power hammer. It has the same, where's the camera? It has the same uh, edge. Mm -hmm. like uh, uh, like the other one this is the one i use with the striker uh, but it's shorter it has a, a a wide striking area for the power hammer and it's slightly domed so mm -hmm. i can tilt it a little bit um, and i tried my best to weld it on this piece of steel as as, as uh, straight as possible in the right direction so it would save me lots of work afterwards. Mm. So that's what I use on the power hammer. You weld on uh, my steel? Sorry? Uh, you weld in my steel? Yeah, this uh, this this is mild steel okay. and this is the H13. Right. And um, I tack weld it, a small tack, and then heat it up and then weld it and then heat it up again and then let it air cool because it's uh, air hardening steel. Maybe I, I, I can just propose the next question, which is um, I have been I've heard that some people uh, no, not recommend to cool your punch in between in water. Mm -hmm. How do how do you handle that cooling of the punch? Um, uh, it always depends first of all, on which steel you are using. Um, if I try to cool the H13 punch in water, uh, I don't think that will work well. <laughs> um, um, I try to cool it um, uh, um, uh, as, as um, I can't find a word. Um, I don't want to cool it uh, too much. Uh, mm -hmm. as, le as less as possible mm -hmm. um, but I use um, uh, soap with a little bit of water mm -hmm. and then very much uh, graphite powder so um, soapy water uh, does cool but does not harden mm -hmm. uh, and the graphite um, when the when the soapy water evaporates it leaves the graphite on the punch and that will help me when I use the punch and also, this is a trick I did not make up myself. <laughs> I wish I, I I had, but I I didn't. Yes, I I, I always use a little of charcoal uh, in the hole, but this worked great. 
Yeah, um, I use um, um, uh, uh, crushed fresh coal uh, in the hole as well because that is um, a lubricant um, surpassed by uh, no other. I don't know how it works, but the coal dust, um, I think my, the punches uh, heat up much less when using coal dust. And, and when you are using fresh coal, um, there are still, um, the tar is still in the coal and it has to burn and it uh, forms a little bit of gas. Yeah. And the gas is compressed between the block of steel and the punch. And sometimes when it's perfect, the, the, the punch explodes out of the hole. Yeah, it never sticks. <laughs> and maybe I have another suggestion because um, uh, I spoke to you about the cheeks of the hammer and that I want them to be even. Uh, and I found when I use uh, this type of punch with the striker, I can uh, punch all the way through to the to the the other side and then only leave a small slither of material and then back punch it from the second side uh, but when i use the same technique on the power hammer it does deform the eye i don't know why but i found that it works that way um, so when, when i punch on the power hammer i only punch like um what is uh, sixty percent of the way from the first side, mm -hmm. and then turn it over, and the other forty from the other side. You you'll have a a, a larger plug than uh, when you punch ninety percent to ten percent, mm -hmm. but um, there is uh, no deformation, and you have two identical cheeks. <laughs> he has shown us his uh, punch for the uh, power hammer, and my question is that. Uh, if I'm using a punch under the power hammer, especially in H13, it's uh, the taper is way more aggressive. So uh, if you drive it in like 90 percent, uh, the the shape is not that likely to lock in because it's a very aggressive taper. It just spits out uh, yeah. all the way back, and it was very the tapers on the side and on the front and back were very uh, very. Uh, not that aggressive. Uh, that? Mine, you mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I, I, I understand totally what you mean. You mean that this angle is more, more steep, and then it jumps out easy. Mm. And with mine, it's, it's not as steep. It's, it's really thin. It acts more like a, a, a slitting chisel. More, it's more, yeah. More shaped like a slitting chisel. Yeah. Just this. This. Through. Yeah. Yes. Good night. And um, um, it tends to stick um, easier than with a steeper angle. Yes. Um, but uh, with a steeper angle, you not only uh, push material to the sides, but you uh, create more drag on the on the block itself, so it will deform the block more. Um, uh, maybe you can imagine the top of the material uh, where you start the hole. Um, it 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 falls into the hole when you are using a very steep punch, um, and that's not what I want. So that's the reason I chose for this more, um, uh, yeah, faster punch, more like a slitting chisel uh, instead of a very steep angle because I don't want my blocks to deform yeah uh, sometimes it's uh if i'm punching a very big billet i just using i'm just using a round punch so if it sticks i just uh grab the handle and turn it 100 uh, 360 degrees around and it just comes out because it's round yeah and uh then i could just run a round drift through and flatten the sides back in and it would give me the perfect oval shape that could clean up with my drift yeah so if you got yeah, enough, enough meat on the side, but big enough, I tend it to be quite easy to use a round punch, especially for me, because my uh, spring hammer is very, uh, very and uh, reliable for this job. Yeah. Uh, I use the round punch. I, um, 
uh, I tried to implement it in the presentation, but uh, I didn't think it was uh, needed very much. But uh, it's good you know, uh, mention it now. Uh, when I want to make uh, a tool without any cheeks, I always use a round punch as well. You can uh, drift it around a little wider and then flatten the sides, and it is a perfect overhaul. Yeah. yeah. For German crust beads, it's just fine. And just yeah. make it German yeah. crust beads. <clears throat> Very handy. Yeah. Or other uh, top tools like uh, a set hammer or a um, uh, flat flatter uh, or uh, round punches or whatsoever. It's a it's a very handy uh, method. Yeah. And the uh, <clears throat> punch, it's just uh, got more. It's a they're tending to be way bigger. So if you got a a, a thicker chisel, it does not heat up quite yeah. uh, that easy. It has more mass, so it takes more energy to heat up. Yeah. Yeah. And so, it's very stable. You can't um uh, it's it's um it's foolproof using a, a, a round punch. I can use it too, I always say. So it must be foolproof. And you can't um uh, mess it up easily. Yeah. <clears throat> so that was uh, just my question too. It's nice to see we all um, have the same uh, experiences with this uh, forging steel, <laughs> making holes. This is a, a similar design. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. But um, the shape is a little different. It is, um, I made this when. Uh, some blacksmith from United States come to Argentina. Is a um, grinder like a, a drill, only this is flat, this side is flat, and um, it's like when you you hit turns a little. Huh? Only one angle, and you yeah. twist, and only one angle. But oh, I so, think so not from four sides. Yes. This is flat, and this half the angle, and the other okay. side is the same. But I think it's really strange this because it works like a drill, turns a yeah. little you hit. I think okay. your your design is, is better because uh, go to the center. Yeah. And uh, when you turn this chisel or you turn the block. Um, you better not turn both because then you're in the same direction but yeah. if you turn one of them um it it i think i never use this but i i think it will want to spin into the hole because the 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 angle is always on the same side yes but um i thought about this um uh grind on a chisel for when you have a a, a hole that is not straight in mm. the block then you can adjust it a little bit, I yeah. think. Good idea. I will try that. <laughs> well, exactly. This is the use why I, uh, where I have seen this kind of results from uh, what is his name, Mark Esprit. Ah, yes, mm. yeah, from yeah. him. Yeah. yeah, Mark Esprit has this has these uh, three books, Fundamentals of Blacksmithing. I highly recommend them. Yes, I do. <laughs> Uh, he, he that. <laughs> ah. This design when you um when you're off center, like if you have punched a bit crooked mm. to get it back. Ah, okay. Yeah. So he there are actually like two. What actually is three. One is both sides are shaped like Rainier's one, and then he has two ground like yours in opposite directions in the book. <laughs> ah. I There's did. also um, a video, uh, I believe, from Mark Esprit about uh, the punching uh, theory, mm -hmm. and um, that is a very good video too. Yeah, he explains yeah. Uh, it uh, very thoroughly how it works. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I own a book. It's called, uh, I mean, it's a, a German book, and 
they say it's given to you in your uh, in your and you get to do your uh, to become uh, it's called the Schmied am Ambus mm -hmm. from uh, Hermann Hundeshagen yeah. and he's explaining very briefly and he's just uh, great at drawing and um, uh, to totally respecting people that are good at drawing um, and he's just uh, explaining very uh, good and uh, from a site that's based on uh, some physics and physics facts and how the metal is moving and how the punch is uh, shaped and ground and because uh, most of them they're just uh, doing uh, he's just uh, he shows you uh, how the punch must be ground and it's just a way more in a great detail and I've seen it uh, in any other book and there is another book I read um, I was given this to uh, Christmas last year it's a uh, compilation from uh, M.T. Richardson it's a very thick, thick book uh, it's about, I think 100 years old the uh, literature and it just uh, explains every aspect in uh, blacksmithing and horse shoeing and uh, wagon wheel making and there's also a chapter about punching and it's just explained in the great detail and how different punches from uh, just also different countries uh, they're kind of called the French punch and I don't know and uh, it's the I could also highly recommend this uh, and to buy a uh, a edited version <clears throat> well thank you how was that book called oh yeah could you just the, uh, that uh, afterwards uh, with the book titles you have been referring to oh yes I, if you could wait uh, one second i could just get it because i don't know yeah uh, if you a message which in uh, i totally get it but if you send a message then i can just copy it into the description and people can refer it from there yeah perfect. yeah yes i uh, got the book upstairs in my room and uh, i just send uh, patrick I, can... I think um yeah but, but i can just highly recommend this book it's uh very so Patrick, I uh, sent you a picture and you could uh, put it in the description. All right, further questions? Anyway, we are now hitting the half hour mark for the presentation and uh, presentation. So I would say we call it good for the official part, if that's fine with everyone. Thank you for everyone joining the official part and uh, catch you up for the next one, which will be with Robin actually talking about how to correctly forge out the reins on tongs mm -hmm. which will take place at the 19th of october is that correct yeah i think so looking forward to that one yeah i'm, uh, I'm very uh looking forward to it uh, i got my whole uh autumn vacation to prepare my presentation so i got a lot of time and i'm working in a real blacksmith shop uh, so i'm looking forward to do some uh, great footage in a uh, equipped shop because it's my shop it's very uh it's not that good for filming i think because uh, <laughs> yeah i don't, i'm i'm looking forward to do the footage in that shop <laughs>